Today I'm going to teach you how to use the sneaky keys transaction pattern to make your coding safer. And that's going to be awesome, so stay for this video. Hello, I'm Ruben from the GameDev.guru, where I teach you about game development and to be more specific about game performance. Today we are going to talk about the infamous transaction pattern and the version that I like out of that. This is going to let you make your code safer. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, because of course I didn't explain it yet, here, have a look at this code. Let's assume that we are programming an MMO, right? For some reason, this is the type of project that people start game development with. You know, let's just make an MMO, of course. What can possibly go wrong? But in any case, let's assume that we want to create an MMO. And one of the things that we do in MMOs, and of course in another type of games as well, is to kill characters in order to level up. Right? So let's assume that we have this function called on NPC kill. And what we do here is just to go to the player profile and say, hey, let's increase the level. I'm just going to ignore all the experience and all of these things because I just want to stick to the point so that I can get closer to the transaction pattern as soon as possible. Let's assume that for now, right? So now I'm going to open Unity and of course hit the play button and we're not going to see anything, right? because we didn't print anything. So what I'm going to do is to add a log and then just to make sure that it works, I'm just going again to hit play. And you will see indeed that it's going to spam the console up to level 1500, which tends to be the cap lately for MMOs, right? They just keep releasing expansions in order to make money out of your pockets and they just increase, you know, level cap and add some content on that. Good business model, isn't it? All right, so we are done leveling up your character, aren't we? No, we are not. The problem is, if you haven't thought about that, is not so much about the operation itself, which is a level up, you know, what can possibly go wrong there. It is about the fact that anyone can call this level up increase level up function, level up operation. Anyone. Let's assume that you go to the level, I don't know, to the credits UI menu level, wherever it is, and you are seeing the credits. Any programmer can go there to that screen and add a level up just for the sake of that, just to have some fun, right? Is that great? No, because think about this. When can you actually level up in your game? Well, you only have a specific set of limited circumstances where you can actually level up your player, right? It can be when you kill someone or when you finish a quest or when you, I don't know, uh, level up one specific skill, like pick pockets or something like this, you know? There, are, I don't know, let's assume there are three possibilities for this. And yet you offer the possibility for any programmer to call this level up function, right? Anywhere in the code, you can do this line here, the player profile dot level plus plus. And that my friend is not safe. That is not something that I want to have in any of my games. That is why we have something called transaction pattern. That is exactly what I'm going to show you today. So if you think about all of this, the problem comes from the fact that this player profile has a public setter, which is in itself not a big deal, right? But the problem is that the entire code base has a reference to this player profile that allows for this public setter. And we don't want that. We only want this to be possible on these scenarios, right? For example, killing someone or completing a quest, you know you name it. You probably have played some MMOs or RPGs or something. You probably know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so what do we do about this? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you uh, to do is to just to create one public interface of your specific, you know, class. The class that you consider to be sensitive in terms of data. All right, so let's call this interface iPlayerProfile. And of course, this specific player profile has to inherit from the interface itself. Now, what are we going to do in this interface? In this interface, we are going to offer the same functionality, but only in read mode, right? So I'm going to get rid of the setter. I'm just going to let people read from the data because reading is safe. And that's about it, right? So now, instead of having a reference to the player profile, 
I'm going to have a reference to the interface of the player profile. And now, guess what? Surprise, I cannot call the level plus plus operation anymore. That's the idea. So, good stuff, right? We are done. No, we are not done, but I'm almost there. The problem is now that you might ask, hey, Ruben, that's nice. You protected everybody from calling the level plus plus operation. How do I actually call this for the moment where it matters? Pretty simple. We're going to implement now, finally, the transaction pattern. For this, we're going to create an abstract class called, let's call this, player transaction. And the only thing this player transaction class does is to offer a public abstract void executes, uh, let's call it transaction function. These transactions will have write access. So that means that they will receive the player profile. And to see this more clearly, I'm going to create the level up transaction for you. So for this, I need to create the public class level up player transaction, for example. Feel free to change the names, of course, which of course inherits from player profile. And I need to overwrite this execute transaction. Yep, I did the wrong class. There we go. I like when writer complains. Isn't it beautiful? So now that I have access to the player profile in write access, the only thing I need to do is to call level plus plus. That's it. And if you even want, I can also just put a log just to be nice to you. So here's a log. And that's, you know, almost done. So now we have something called level up player transaction. Now, how do we use it? Well, here we can do something like new level up player transaction. And now what we need to do is to execute that transaction, right? Now, how do we do this? It's going to be rather easy. We have to go to the interface of the player profile. And here we can add the method called execute transaction, right? And here we pass the player transaction and we implement that in the derived class. And it's going to be actually pretty simple. We just call transaction, execute transaction, and we pass this, which is the player profile that has right access. And to be a bit uh, less verbose, what we can do as well is of course to change the transaction method from execute transaction to execute. I think that should be clear, right? All in all, what you need to remember about all of this is that in order to now do the level up, you have to call the execute transaction and then pass the transaction itself, right? That is about it. That is all we need to do. And now we have this done. Isn't it great? Now, the key thing to do about this is that you need to think in advance which situations will lead to changing sensitive data in your project. And then you just create transactions for that. So yes, you could tell now, yeah, you can still level up, right? Yes, you can, but now it forces you to think about this before just doing a level plus plus, right? Now you need to think, uh, you know, does it make sense to create a transaction for what just happened? You might create a transaction that is like, maybe I killed an NPC, transaction and there you add load and then you add uh, a level or add experience and all of this you group these operations together in a way that they are atomic either you do something completely or you don't so maybe you want to go to this transaction and you know instead of level up to play transaction you can also call this player killed npc transaction and here, depending on the data that you pass, you can just do a level plus plus. You can also do something like player, I don't know, add gold or gold plus 50. You know, it depends on the type of uh, transaction that you are thinking about. If you need even some data, you can always pass it to the constructor. Okay, so you can always add uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, MPC 
uh, loot data or NPC data, and then you just store it here. And then, you know, you just know how to do this, right? And then you can use it in the execute part itself. So that is the key thing to separate read only interface from the right access specific class. Then whenever you need to touch sensitive data, you think about that in advance and you create transactions for that, right? This has the advantage that the code is safer because the developer has to really think in advance before they actually can change your data, okay? Now, be careful with this, okay? Be careful because this implementation that I just gave you is not production ready. So do not ever think about using this in any production level project, right? Any project that you actually want to ship at some point. Why do I say this? Let me actually tell you why I say this, okay? I'm going to even to remove the debug log. And I'm going to rename the player transaction back. So it's going to be like this. So let's go to Unity. Let's see what happens when I run this. Nothing happens, right? Of course I removed the log. Let's check the profiler. So let me stop recording. You see this part, GC alloc. If you go to my script, you'll see that this function is allocating memory. Why is this? Well, we are creating transactions. We are creating memory. We are creating garbage for the, you know, we are just putting pressure into the garbage collector, which is not nice. You shouldn't do that because it's going to slow down your game. It's going to cause stutters. It's going to freeze your gameplay and your players are not going to be happy about it because yes let me tell you these things can take up to two seconds to finish on mobile right just imagine just skipping frames for two seconds it's crazy so what you need to do is to be careful with implementation of your transaction and if you are interested in the transaction pattern for your production ready project you can join the unity performance task force in the unity performance task force i have a lesson fully dedicated to the transaction pattern where I teach you everything I know and how I actually use it in my everyday project. Not only that, you will get access to all of the other patterns that I talk about that just perform well, because after all, no matter what you do, your game has to be performing exceptionally well in order to sell well and not get pretty bad reviews, right? So join the Unity Performance Task Force and go to the lesson 21st. In that lesson, I speak about transaction pattern in a way that it performs just perfectly. Right? All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, just give it a like, subscribe, and of course, if you want to support this channel, subscribe to the Unity Performance Task Force. Take care.